Hi, I'm Roseanne and welcome to my garden. Many flowering plants can get overwhelmed by the size and weight of their own blooms and begin to topple over. That's not good for the plant nor the harmony of the garden. The good news is it's an easy fix using plant supports. In this video, I'd like to take you around our garden and show you the various types of plant supports I use to keep our garden looking tidy. Along the way, I'll show you what's blooming this time of year. This is a blue globe thistle plant, and I've learned over the years this is a plant that likes to be supported. So I'm going to use uh, probably the most versatile plant supports I have, and those are poles and twine. Uh, I'm going to use four poles all the way around it and wrap it probably one level with twine and we'll see how that works. I've put in the four stakes around the, uh, around the plant and I bet you can hardly see them. That's my goal. I don't like plant supports to be too visible unless, unless they have to. I cut a piece of twine which will fit loosely around the four stakes. That'll give me enough to, uh, to wrap it more tightly and create little knots or secure the twine to the stakes. So I'm just going to start out by tying a knot to the first one. And I'll tie a double knot to make sure it doesn't loosen up. I'm going to use the twine around the stakes about midway high so you really don't notice the twine. So I'll wrap it. And on this second pole, I'm just going to do a tight wrap. Uh, no knot is necessary. I continue to wrap the third stake and to secure the support, I finished with a double knot on the fourth stake. I'm done tying up the blue globe thistle and I hope you'll agree it looks better already. And uh, more importantly, it's going to look great through the rest of the summer. The next plant I'm going to support is our Matrona sedum. They're a favorite flower among pollinators in the fall garden, and their blooms are a soothing shade of pink, which blend well with the other fall flowers. In early summer, when they're about 8 to 10 inches high, I pinch the top third off to promote bushier growth. Even so, I find the sedum still looks better with some support to keep it from going flat in the middle. Here I'm using a section support that works well for plants with multiple stems. It's important to take time and be gentle when placing plant supports. When using a section support like this, you will need to pull growth through the sections very gently as you slowly push down the stakes of the support. Another handy type of plant support I use are these interlocking L-shaped wires. Here we have a flopped over calla lily. The L-shaped supports are a quick fix to get the flower back to upright. I simply start on one end and carefully connect the supports one by one. Of course, a good substitute for these supports are two or three stakes connected with twine. I find that plants with lots and lots of thin stems, such as chives, do best with a heavily partitioned grid form of support. It supports all of the plant stems in a uniform manner. The trick with a grid form is that it really should be placed very early in the season so that the delicate stems naturally grow through the support. In general, the earlier you can place plant supports, the better. 
Although the chives are done blooming now, the weak stems would be totally flopped over by now and look unsightly for the rest of the summer. Admittedly, this plant support is a bit rusty and has seen better days. To keep our supports looking good for as long as possible, we always store them indoors for the winter. If they get rusty, which they will eventually, I simply give them a spray of green paint in the spring to get them looking good again. The next plant I'd like to support for the season is my Lord Clayton Phlox. It grows about maybe another foot taller and produces beautiful red blooms. So um, now is the time to sort of corral it, get it going in the right direction. And for that I'm going to use um, a store purchased ring. Um, this came actually with three metal legs, but they were only about two feet tall and it's way too short for this plant. So I took the legs off. It's good for other things, but for this plant, I'm going to use my stakes, the ring, and I'm going to uh, attach the ring to the stakes with my twine. So first let me put in the three stakes evenly spaced around the plant and then I'll tie in the ring. Again, I'm making sure the pointy end is down and I'm, and I'm going to place the stakes so that there's not one right in the middle as you look at the, at the bed. I, I want, uh, you know, basically a stake on each side of the plant and then one in the back. Again, and I'll start by uh, pushing it in close to the bottom so I don't break the stake. It's, it's a little tough to get tall stakes in exactly straight. Sometimes you need to pull it out, try it again, pull it out, try it again. With the three stakes in the ground, I'm now ready to tie the ring to the stakes. So with the ring on the outside of the poles, I'm going to uh, wrap the, take the twine under the ring. I'm going to twist it and then come around front and tie it absolutely as tight as I can. The pieces of twine I had were about a foot, a foot long. So once I get the first knot, I'm going to tie the second knot immediately. Uh, and on this tight is tight is good. When I'm done, just for aesthetics, I'm going to clip these. So let me do the other ones. Delphinium are certainly the tall beauties of the garden, but they do need staking. Uh, and what's best is to stake them sort of in a bunch, uh, not singly staked. I guess that would be my one piece of advice. Don't use a single pole tied to a single stem for Delphinium because one strong wind and they will just snap. Let the wind move them and let them move around within the confines of a support. Here I have a ring support and I also have uh, twine. The ring supports have uh, a spring mechanism to affix them to the stakes. Now I, I love these but unfortunately I cannot find them available for sale anymore so I don't want to promote them too much uh, because another great substitute is just wrapping, creating triangles around your delphinium with twine. Or you could use, again, smaller rings, which you can get available at nursery centers, not with these springs, and use the twine method I demonstrated earlier to attach those to the poles. Look at these hydrangea. Isn't this great? I especially love the combination with the red calla lilies. But uh, what makes these so spectacular is the size of the blooms. And uh, unfortunately, they're also kind of heavy for the stems that, they, that they're on. So these need support. Not all hydrangea do, these do. 
and I've learned from years of not paying attention to them and then by August they're all flopped over. So now I'm going to support them all the way around and uh, there's about 15, 20 blooms on these now and I want to make sure that they look great as long as they possibly can because this burst of white in this part of the garden is, is, uh, is really a good look. To support the hydrangea, I'm going to use these steel half rounds. They're really heavy duty and uh, will work very nicely with the hydrangea. In front of the hydrangea, looks a little wilted, is our uh, turtle head plant. This will bloom in about August, uh, but right now it's just nice green foliage rounding out the garden. Uh, so let me begin. I used three of the half round supports to completely encircle the hydrangea. Without these, it would soon be a floppy mess. Now it'll look good for the rest of the summer. Siberian iris are one of my favorite early summer perennials. They have delicate and ornate blooms and thin grass-like foliage. After blooming, the foliage plays a key role in the garden by providing welcome contrast to other plants in the perennial bed. But the foliage can get floppy and often need support. For these, I like to use a two-tiered support to hold the fine foliage upright. Of course, stakes and twine would work also. There are times when a single stake is just the right support. I find that my 4 o'clock flowers benefit from just that support, especially early in the season when they're just beginning to take off and their stems are beginning to thicken. Here's a video of my four clocks from last August. This bush-like display is only three plants. They're a great garden filler that I grow from seed every year. The best part is I harvest the seeds every fall so they don't cost a thing. The blooms open and close in the morning and again later in the day, hence the name. When single staking my plants, I prefer to use green coated wire. It gives me a very snug fit around the stake and I can easily twist the wire to create a loop. I find that working with twine is just a bit more difficult and the green wire goes faster. Plus, I often reuse the wire from season to season. For the last example of supporting plants, I'd like to demonstrate that many structures in your garden can serve as part of a plant support system, such as fences or trees. This is Golden Glow Rutabachia. It produces beautiful yellow blooms, but gets, oh, between five and eight foot tall. What I do do is I pinch some of the plants down at the end of May, uh, so that they remain shorter and bushier and um, it provides a layering effect so that I have flowers in the in the middle and the top of the plant but for the tall stems and I think you can see some of the aggressive ones right here uh, for the tall ones they definitely need to be supported or tied or they will a hundred percent probability flop over at least at least for me in this environment. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use twine again and uh, basically tie these loosely to the fence. I hope you found this video enjoyable and learned some tips along the way. Thanks for watching.